Welcome to the Healthy Habit Hot Seat, where we chat to extraordinary humans and world-leading health experts to dive deep into the intricacies of the daily habits that have shaped their success. Remember, success leaves clues, right? I'm your host and resident healthy habit coach, Loz Antonenko, and I cannot wait to help you re-energize your life so you too can create opportunity, vitality, and abundance to become the master of your own incredible healthy destiny. Now, let's get into today's conversation. I am speaking with Lauren Seiden again, someone who was the workaholic, disconnected and confused with who she was and what she wanted out of life. Today, I discuss the habits and routines of Lauren to learn more about her goals and strategies that have brought her to her success. Welcome back to the Healthy Habit Hot Seat. So glad to chat with you again. Uh, In the previous episode, we spoke about some of the challenges you've overcome on your personal quest to wellness, as well as your successes in life and business. You do love to travel uh, and you also love to learn. So having studied in over 33 countries, I am sure you have created the opportunity to sample food from all around the world. If you knew you only had 24 hours left to live, what would your day's menu look like? So I have to say, I was surprised, but I love the food in India a lot more than I thought I would. Uh, So maybe some dal from there, which I love. I always have a green juice and even if it was like... I always want to have that. Um, And then I'm usually known I love some good vegan, sugar-free, gluten-free sweets of some sort or vegan ice cream. Um, So that would be my day, probably. (laughs) You live and breathe the ultimate vegan life? Um, Yeah, mostly. Amazing. A little wild fish here and there, and then I've been mostly vegan, um, years of vegan since 2007. Really? Excellent. And no coffee? No coffee since before that, actually. I love it. With this part of the interview, we're going to get into some pretty nitty gritty uh, details of your daily habits. So vegan, India, you like it hot and spicy, no coffee. What would you consider your healthy habit and why? Meditation. Um, It looks a little bit different every day, but I don't go a day without it. I don't actually go a day without multiple forms of it in some way. So just incorporating intentionality, time to process, breath work. I think that's been one of the healthiest habits that I've really created. I think in 2007, when I first started and was exposed to it, it was obviously very different. And it would just incorporate maybe just more breath work. And I would just be like inhaling now exhaling now and just and I would tune in to every part of my body head to toe and I would take the time to just go down every body part until I knew how to pinpoint and I could feel with it took me about a year to really master that but I did that for about an hour a day where I until I could just like if I had something going on in my shoulder or my elbow or something random in my body where I could really feel it um, and create that level of feedback so why is meditation so important to you I think it's helped me process a lot of things that were painful and challenging and from from so many different aspects, from physical, from emotional, from relationships, from family, like anything in my life, business, clarity, um, really manifesting things that I've wanted to create. I think that meditation's played probably one of the biggest key roles to really helping me dial in any of the parts that were maybe unclear, doubtful, fearful, gives you time to process. So it's not that we're judging the thoughts that arise, but we're really learning how to be more comfortable with ourselves. I think meditation's where I created a lot of my courses. It's where I get clear and actually make things happen. So I could go on and on. It's helped me also with physical healing in dozens and dozens of places. I can totally relate to you on so many levels with that. I think, you know, from a perspective of, you know, ideas and clarity, most of my best, most life-changing ideas have come to me lying face down on a like a table doing nothing just meditating Uh (laughs) I might have needles in my back I might be getting acupuncture but yeah when you give yourself the space and the energy to um find clarity that's when the real the real life is there the juicy parts of life and it's like yes you know I'm on top of putting ourselves in those situations to be a receiver for that 
Yeah. Exactly. And it's, it's always there. It's just allowing you, you know, time and energy to focus and, and, and tap in. Yeah. So I'm sure our audience would love to know, do you, Lauren Seiden, have any unhealthy habits? Yeah. Um, so TV is one that a lot of people perceive to be unhealthy. And I, if I wanted to get rid of it, I would have. I enjoy it. And so, I mean, there's a balance there. I think that I set myself up. I could definitely get sucked into watching TV um, for time waster, like in a place where it became really unproductive and wasn't serving and was completely unhealthy. And so that's always a little bit of a balance for me or when I get caught in something that I really want to finish a show or a series. Um, so I like to create some boundaries for myself and create it as something that like, oh, this is, I choose this tonight in a way that's going to actually serve me uh, versus feeling like I get stuck in it at the end of the day and just putting it on kind of unconsciously. Yeah. What's the one habit you'd like to change? Is it TV or is it something else? I don't think it would be TV, actually. I think if it were to be something I want to change. Okay, I think more um, more commitment towards writing and towards, we were just talking about content. And so I guess like for me, putting out more content, I always have it in the background as a thought. And sometimes I even do it on an iPhone note or somewhere, but uh, I haven't always created that time to really put it all together. Okay. Yeah. With your ideas, do you have a vision board that you use? I do. I love making vision boards. I was super into scrapbooking in college. And so being able to like take all my scrapbooking and creative outlet into <laughs> vision boarding was really fun. Um, so sometimes I do them digitally and then I usually have like at least a small one that I do and I have one that I'll add to every year that's like a, uh, goes in my journal and I'll have one for each category there. And then I have different ones. Yeah. Some wow. Photos and things we get to bring together. And this is the time of year. It's great. And what I love about vision boards is that it allows you to be playful, mm -hmm. you know, and you make it your own. Do you have some sort of morning routine that you use to maintain a level of homeostasis in your biorhythm? Yes. My morning routine is actually pretty important to me. So I always have my phone on airplane mode. Um, I don't want to, so usually like I choose when I want to start the day and kind of start my phone um, and I'll set myself up to have at least an hour or two where that way I can do my meditation, do some of my flow, do a little bit of yoga and stretching and movement. Um, sometimes that's actually at the gym in a class and sometimes like this morning it's just in my apartment to start. And um, so I think, yeah, water is huge. Like always I have a full glass of water by my bed. So I'll drink some, not as much before bed, but when I wake up, it's the first thing is just to have that go down. Um, yeah, I think that there's a few things, but really just taking the time from yourself to process. And sometimes it's in those really early hours because it's a beautiful and quiet time. So when it can be, I really enjoy settling into that kind of like dark, still time that we can give ourselves. With sleep. Mm -hmm. How many hours on average would you get per night? And do you have a bedtime ritual? So you have a morning ritual. Do you have one at the other end of the day? And what does it look like if you do? Okay. Yeah, I would say I get on average probably about seven, six, seven hours. Um, and sometimes I'll actually, I'll have, go into bed and I'll have more time kind of wind down maybe around 10 hours just because of the wind down and the wind up kind of take me time. So I'll kind of have usually about a half hour to an hour meditation on each end of that. And my wind down in evening time, it's really just being mindful of screen time, um, mindful of like what I'm putting into my body and into my head and the thoughts that I'm processing and giving myself time to clear and then to set myself up for the next day. So I always kind of lay the things out and the resources and the paperwork and the clients that I'm working with the following day. So that's all organized before I go to bed. And then I like to just get really clear on three things that I'm grateful for. Um, and some accomplishments that I had and writing those down. And then I used to look back at them once a month. And actually I found that to be a really great practice that I should incorporate again. That would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think there's definitely a lot of merit in that and it allows you to see how far you've come as well. Mm -hmm. for yeah. Sure. So your journey this far has been full of lots of twists and turns and you've taken some massive leaps of faith to find yourself mm -hmm. in the position that you're in today. How did you align your purpose with your values? It's a good question. I think I aligned it most when I got clear on learning and teaching as my top value, which we've discussed before, and health and business, and those are my three values. And so for me, I think before I was just doing things and I was more focused on the doing and I was 
enjoying helping people, but it didn't, I didn't necessarily translate that into my purpose. I think when I got really clear of learning and teaching and how I best support myself and really focusing on that place of being first and who I was, and I started using meditation, I think, differently and all the tools differently. I think that's where it really started to align. And that's also when I started to say, like, what do I really do? And I help people and myself become the most inspired, connected, and productive version of ourselves. So I think that was really my purpose. Are you a gadget fan that meditates? Do you find it challenging to meditate and have given up because it's all just too hard? Time for Muse's technology-enhanced meditation bundle. This award-winning biofeedback technology translates your mental activity into the guiding sounds of weather to help you find focused calm. Busy mind, stormy weather. Calm mind, peaceful weather. Muse offers real-time monitoring of brain activity, heart rate, breathing, and body movements, and their new Muse S device is perfect for sleep. Visit mbsy.co forward slash muse forward slash laws to save on your brain sensing headband today. Now back to the show. That's so beautiful. I think that, you know, you live and breathe every single thing that you, you have in your life now. So you definitely very, very aligned. And I think the key thing is to work out what your values are yeah. first and foremost. And so many people go through their life you know, doing, as you've said, we're, a lot of us are doers and we just are like helpaholics. We're so addicted to just doing it and we don't sometimes know the core of, you know, what, what is driving the doing. So that's a, that's a really good tip. Uh, and really seeing how we're receiving on that cycle yeah. as well. So that way it doesn't become where we always do it, but then we deserve or have to have some energy exchange on the other totally. side. It actually feels a lot more clear when there's that level. Totally agree. In terms of daily purposeful productivity and getting things done mm -hmm. and being aligned with your purpose and your values, what would be your top three tips for our audience? I think structure and scheduling. So it's again, like part of that getting clear. Once you're clear, like how do you want to structure and schedule the things that you actually do want to get done? So chunk, chunking time for me is really key throughout my day. Um, meditation, I think is a huge one. And then hydration, like taking care of our body. So maybe I think water is a big piece, but anything like once you know what you're doing, also know how do you want to take care of your body in that process as well. I think that's a really great tip and one that a lot of people forget about. Um, we're so focused on outcomes yeah. and we forget about ourselves on the way. You know, self-care mm -hmm. is super important. So thanks so much for sharing. Um, you know, I think our audience definitely needs to hear that. <laughs> so you love tennis. You love uh -huh. skiing. Yeah. On top of those activities, what would be your favorite way to move your body to optimize not only your energy, but your mobility and physical vitality? So I think I do a lot of like stretching uh, throughout the day. And like when I wake up, I like to stretch. I like to just do some planks and some different things and some sun salutations uh, just to move my body. I think like dance and being playful. So sometimes I create a lot of time for it. And sometimes it's just a few songs. And then um, and sometimes there's music and sometimes there's not it kind of varies day to day. Uh, but I think, yeah, dance and movement, any way that you can move your body that feels good and just like stretching into as one of my mentors say, uh, Guru Singh, he always says, stretch into your body glove. It's like, you know, you really like when you put something on and it's like, and I love that. So yeah, that's beautiful. I mean, yeah. it makes so much sense. Just the visualization you get when you say that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fantastic. With your vitality, do you use any supplements or biohacking technology in your daily routine? I do. Um, Yes. Let's see. So I actually put out because you had asked me this question yesterday and I was like, oh yes, herbs. Like that was, I think like Chinese herbs was one of the biggest things that I started introducing that I didn't even, I didn't realize at first, but it was really making a huge difference. So I do like pearl. This is um, from Jing Herbs. I don't know if you can see, but I use pearl, oh, yeah. Hoshu Wu, um, which supports your immunity and your liver function, calms your spirit. Like all these different ones have different intentionality. Um, reishi, chaga, these are ones that are daily things. You can do it every day in your smoothie or however you like to do it. Um, so my morning smoothie is probably one of my favorite things to do. Uh, and it always includes a green juice, usually an avocado, and then a lot of different herbs. Um, 
And then my Biomat is something that I use every day for over the last 10 years, and especially when I'm on my laptop. It supposedly helps with EMFs. It helps me feel really relaxed and calm. Uh, it has amethyst and different crystals in it. I like to surround myself by things that are intentional, that create beauty and inspiration. Like I always usually have some sort of crystal, whether I'm wearing oh, that's it or around me. Or, thank you. Um, just this is like clearing and Clear, selenite yeah. and amethyst and turquoise. Um, black tourmaline is really great around computers. So I think there's there's so many things. Blue blockers, like making sure our screen. Um, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Flux and on the iPhone now, there's like a thing you can make it more warm so your screen so you don't have all those blue lights because I used to wear the blue blockers all the time in the evening. And now um, our computers and our technology do it for us. But yeah. I just think that's really helpful. That actually made a big difference for me at night. So with your biohacks, let's, yeah. let's use that term, okay. they've definitely improved the quality of your life. Yeah, for sure. And with your smoothie, do you put all of those things in at once or do you sort of no. structure them out throughout the day? I love it. I just like pack it in in the morning just, and just want, yeah. Nutritionally dense, mate. That's the way we rock and roll. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so obviously you are super attracted to people and ideas that help you serve and add immense value to the lives of other people. What is your most ambitious goal and how will you make it a reality? One, I am working on a new book. Um, I have one on health and one on stress that I'd like to update. And then I've been working on a spirituality book. Uh, I don't know if I perceive that it'll get completed. I'm definitely starting to create some more structured writing time around it. So it's in the process of revealing itself and unfolding and seeing what the clarity. So I imagine that will take a little bit of time, but you never know, but that's something I'm looking forward to. That really is so exciting. Yeah. yeah. And I think giving yourself, you know, the opportunity to explore where that takes you as well and not going, you know, this is something that has to be done by this day. You do a lot of stuff, Lauren. So I do. And I think that I, <laughs> we've talked about this before together is like patience is so key. And every Absolutely. time you know, we set those goals and yes, we may achieve them to an extent, but even when you finish your product or you finish the book or you finish something, there's still always other aspects to it that take longer. So I think that it's great to create some structure and some milestones along the way, but also you want to leave space you know, for what can come that you, the things that come that are so much better than we could even imagine. Yep. I'm with you on that one, sister. What's the one thing this week that you are going to be giving energy and what measures will you put in place to ensure that you achieve that? So I am actually finishing up in each category of my life. I reevaluate every year and kind of reset the vision and the mission statement and purpose behind each one. And that's how I then create the vision board. So that's kind of the first step towards that. And so for me, it's a great time to kind of disconnect and connect to myself uh, and connect to all that I'm creating. So I'm setting a lot of intentional time for that and completion and just like actually taking in all that's happened in the past year, 10 years, five years. And so I'm actually kind of I'm actually recording and writing some of those things down. I love it. So finally, mm -hmm. your website, which we mentioned in the previous episode, mm -hmm. uh, is an incredible resource for people to be able to learn more about how you can help them strategically uh, shift their life. For anybody in our audience who's interested in learning more, where can you suggest they start? So yeah, on laurenseiden.com, which I imagine you'll be able to see on the podcast. It'll be in the show notes. My, it's just my name. And on there, I have a lot of free resources and I put a lot of intention into making sure that people could get supported. So there's actually, if you scroll down, there's even book recommendations for each category for your prosperity, your spirituality, your health, your business, your relationships, all of it. Um, there's free meditations. There's a lot of guided resources. So you can kind of start there and you can go through recipes. You can go through meditations. You can go through content on the blog. So whatever it is that you're looking for, again, that's also broken out into categories. I want to make everything simple and easy for people to find and for them to get the support and inspiration that they need. And then I also do coach matchmaking as well on the new development side. So if you want, I can help you and really serve as the concierge on that process because I know a lot of coaches and I've had a lot of different experiences in this realm and I love helping people really dial in to the exact support system that's gonna support them best. And then as well, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. You are such an inspiration, Lauren, and it's been an absolute pleasure to chat with you today. Um, 
I really appreciate the time you've taken out, you know, of your busy schedule to share some of the challenges, wins and daily intricacies of your life really as a purposeful human being and successful entrepreneur. Guys, make sure you check out Lauren's website. That's Lauren Seiden, L-A-U-R-I-N-S-E-I-D-E-N.com. Thanks so much, lovely. And um, I can't wait to chat with you another time. Sounds good. Me too. Thank you so much. Absolutely. (laughs) Bye. Thanks so much for joining us this week on the Healthy Habit Hot Seat. Make sure to visit loslife.com where you can subscribe to the show in iTunes, Google Podcasts and Spotify so you'll never miss an episode. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, I'd be stoked with a five-star rating on iTunes. Better still, tell a friend and share the love. If you loved this episode, you might want to check out my book, The Healthy Habit Handbook, available in soft cover, ebook, and audio form on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Balboa Press, and all good bookstores. Be sure to tune in for our next episode for your fortnightly dose of inspiration from some of the world's most successful and healthy lifestyle masters. Remember, stay inspired. I'm Loz Antonenko, and ciao for now.